Hello, this is Red McNed, and welcome back to the saga. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you the progress I've made with the Whirlpool. Also, I managed to do a little bit of interesting work in the town, so hopefully you enjoy that. And let's get started. Also, I must say, that is probably the most concise intro I've ever done. So, you know, good, good job, me. This is what will hopefully be the first in a series of, I don't know how many actually, whatever, um, updates on the progress I've been able to do this week on this Whirlpool. First off, I managed to get the cylinder in, as you can see here, from uh, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, and that was quite a bit. Basically, this took uh, almost two double chests of sand. And you might notice this is missing. That's because I don't want to have to have you miss out on any of the awesome building action for this. I really like jumping off that. But this is what the underside looks like. The underside. It's a lot of ocean. It's pretty deep. Uh, also, a lot of rabbits seem to have come out of nowhere and uh, started to join me out here. No, I don't know. There's one of them over there, too. But whatever. It's It's kind of nice. Gets a little lonely out here, so sometimes they, they hop along and say hey. But what my deal is, is I basically have inventory of sand. Pick a spot and just hold down the place button. And I position my cursor on the screen so that when that tower is done, another one, see, and if I'm really sneaky, I can kind of glide on over here and uh, catch the next one. Or I could be perfect. Also, I don't trust these, these mountains at night. So I have a bed. I haven't been bugged yet, but I don't know, you know? I don't know. You know? All right, I've been busy. I've been very busy. Uh, let's get a view from camera two, so, oh, oh, um, so, so that we can see what's, what's going on. Um, so here's, here's what's changed. I put in a wall in between this, because what I like to do is go in lines to clear out the water. It's really the only use, or effective way I've seen using the sponge block, uh, reliably for getting rid of water. Otherwise you just like place them randomly and it fills right back in and that's not really fun. I have some furnaces there, fern eye, to uh, help out instead of having to go back to my base, which is, that'd be, you know. The reason I have this line in between is because the diameter is 92 blocks, counting the outside ring, and I can only fit 64 sponges in this, in an inventory slot. So. I basically need to have enough of these to make it across in that slot in one go for it to be effective. Because if I run out, if I run short, it just all kind of fills in and that's not good. What I got here though is that I basically, I'll make a line and I'll go one, two, three, four, make another line and it brings down the water for, for the most part, uh, two blocks. But anyways, let's get down to business. So this is the fourth one. So that's where the first sponge goes. There's no time, uh, timeliness really needed for this, just put it down. But for the rest of it, you have to be consistent for this to work. Time is not on your side. So you basically have to hold down shift, place the mouse toward the bottom of the block, like not off of it, give yourself a little room but shift, you're not gonna move the mouse at all. You're not gonna take your finger off shift. You hold down S, which is the back button, which isn't gonna do anything right now. You're gonna line yourself up so that you don't go sideways much. And then you're gonna hold down the click button and never let go of any of these buttons till you reach the other side. So this is what it should look like. Now there's a little glitchiness. I can already see stuff's filling in. Um, don't run any other programs while you're doing this, because it'll slow things down. 
If it does fill in like that, then don't worry, you can get it in the next level. But that is a little bit annoying, I'll admit. So once you get to the end, that should normally, as you can see, that's it's done the job. And you just go to the next row. So one, two, three, four. Make sure you have a full inventory or full enough. And do the same thing. If you find yourself off centered like I am right now, you can always give yourself just a little tap left or right. Like here's a little little left tap. And you can line yourself back up. See that one actually worked better. That I don't know what happened there. So long story short for you, hopefully, it's gonna be really long for me. Can't skip this one. I have to do this at each level. What is really important for this actually is the pickup process. Now, um, the reason why these are three apart is because it helps remove these. And what is worth noting and very crucial to know is that you have to pay attention to the five minute despawn thing. So basically you have five minutes once you break the first sponge to um, pick it up. And what I'm doing right now is holding down shift and forward and positioning my mouse so that the block breaks and my mouse is on the next block. So I can just hold down the click button. This is the fastest way I've found to break sponge blocks. I wish it was a faster way, but this is what it is. I basically break blocks for exactly three minutes, which gives me two minutes to go down into the water, pick up all the sponges, hopefully all of them, and that usually takes the other two minutes, so I'm, I'm golden. It, it's a really stupid feeling. <laughs> it's a really stupid feeling if you wait too long and then you end up with a stack that you didn't you weren't able to retrieve. It's it's not a good feeling. And then you can uh, hop over to the next one, which isn't really that a thing you have to do now, but eventually there won't be this ring on the side. And then when you're when you're done, you go down. It takes forever to go down. If you have Depth Strider three and Respiration three, that helps a lot. And luckily these don't really fly to the side too often, but they can get in some strange spots. So have your brightness up or some kind of night vision. I don't know. Whatever works for you. So that you don't lose one of these very precious blocks. Oh, also standard torch light up air bubbles trick. You can breathe underwater. I think that just about covers it. Let's see what happens. Who did this? Like, who who would actually do this? And and like, why would it, why would anyone do this? <laughs> uh, I know someone, at least someone, did this. They commented on my my tutorial and said that they made this. At least one person. No, they said they did it in survival, but like, what? like on on paper, it's like yeah, well, you know, just get rid of all the water, and then you realize how slow it is, and then like, it you only go in two levels at a time. And you're going like four sideways at a time. And every three of these, three or four of these, you have to like break them and put them into the furnaces. For furnaces. Also, I stopped here after like four days of doing this for like four hours per day, sometimes more, because my hand actually got kind of, it worried me. <laughs> And I don't want to injure myself doing this. It's it's actually already a lot better. I, this is a few days later. But I think I just strained it. Because you're just shifting all the time. Actually, I'm being dramatic. It's not really it's not really that bad. But, man, there's there's a lot of water in the ocean. And look at that. There's still, there's still this much more. I was hoping I could get, like, half of this done. But, you know, I'm not going to... This wouldn't be the first time I've kind of injured myself <laughs> for the... The, you know, the things I do. The things I do. But if something feels weird on my body, my wrists, or my hands, I, I stop. I, it's not worth it. It's not worth toughing it and actually injuring yourself. So, this is what I got so far. It's also kind of funny is that I've noticed that uh, 
grass has been slowly creeping up the uh, the sides of this. So for clarification, I'm not sick of this yet. <laughs> this uh, this project. It just might be nice to uh, you know take a break from it every so often. I wouldn't mind kind of turning the other way for a little bit, doing something else. That being said, I did do something else. Back at the village, I'm wondering, can you notice anything that's different as I innocuously scan the horizon? You might think it's odd that there's a dirt tower here. Well, it is. I've been, I should explain though, I've been working on the portal actually, the sky portal up here. Before I say too much though, I think I, I want to make it. I want to have a little demonstration first. This is the old portal entrance to the village, the uh, maintenance sort of portal, hidden away uh, in here, where no one would knew about it. But as you see, it's broken, so that the only portal working is in over there, over there. I'm gonna go over there. Down here, as seen from the cave, in the uh, yeah. I'm, don't worry, I'm gonna. I'll take care of this. It actually works in 1.9. But this is the map room portal. And this is the the way out. This will be officially the way out. There'll be a way in and a way out of this world. This will be the way out. So I'm kind of doing it backwards. But when you first come in, I don't want it to be into some underground weird place. Like I want that to be like the finale, the underground weird place. So ideally, when you when you transport into the world for the first time, or I guess when I do. Oh, isn't this isn't this interesting? Where do you think I am? Where? Do they... Look over the edge as it's rendering in. Yep, I am at the sky portal. So you come in the sky portal, you leave the ground portal. And it all goes to the same nether portal. In fact, if I if I didn't like that I I was like, uh, -uh I don't like this place. I can I can go back in and um ship. Yeah, and it's the same portal. This one I actually removed because I it did actually do some stuff. This was the one that linked up to the the underground map room before. And it was the both those portals portals are weird. I was just can I just say portals are weird. <laughs> I I since since I'm at a Y is one twelve and the, the sky portal is at one thirty one thirty six. And not it, it's closer also horizontally. So it'll go to that one. It'll go to the sky one. Where actually if I was going in here this wouldn't go to the sky one, it would go to the underground one still. But I'm I'm assuming that it's linear or whatever. Like the further the closest portal in 3D space uh, is the one that gets gets the me when I go through it. But anyways, I did do something up here. You might notice there's a looks like there's a second portal down there. That's the original one. I decided I wanted this ten blocks higher. So you know, as they say, why build one when you can build two for twice the price? So yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be jumping down there and taking that out. But I wanted to get this ready for uh, being the the new entrance. I'm gonna really like this, and and yes, this is this means that these portals, these sky portals, are actually going to be used as portals into the area. So just like in true fashion of the game, Twilight uh, Zelda Twilight Princess, as this is designed from, it'll actually teleport you into the worlds. So I'm, I'm pretty happy actually. This is, uh, I'm, I'm happy this worked. I got a little lucky. I'm gonna be honest. I got a little lucky that these these lined up the way they did. So at this point, I'm just building up this room up here. I walked around down there, you can't really see it. So I'm happy about that. I still have the torches keeping mobs off of that, but I don't want torches up here because I don't want to light this up necessarily or unnecessarily. So I'm just going to put half slabs of netherrack and 
That should keep stuff off of here. And as a final touch in the back, no, this won't be the final touch. It'll be a touch. Oh, that's kind of nice. <laughs> All right, just for the record, and so that I could say I did it, I'm gonna show what the actual journey will look like. So you're gonna go, oh, new world. Or I'm gonna go, oh, new, new portal. You know, whoosh in. There's only one direction to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put these here, just so stuff doesn't spawn there either. But you're like, oh, okay. I can kind of see what's down there. Well, let's go. You jump down, and I might want to deepen this, because that seems a little unrealistic. There you're just like, ah, hi, I'm here now. Let's walk around. Yeah. So yeah, do things, sightsee, da, 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 da. It's the sound of sightseeing. Eventually though, over here in the secret, secret area, you have to go, oh, oh, I hit, I hit the walls. There, this will be the way out. Close the door because we're polite here. That's what you do. Right back where you started from, and then wham bam, do it again. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show the portal. It's a new location. It's just a little different, just a little bit more up in the air. I like that the middle's filled in though. It, it, seems, it seems more complete. I don't know, thorough? Something? And you know, on the top, for the most part, it's pretty much hidden. Like, uh, it looks like, it pretty much looks like a sky portal. Actually, it's cool from here, because you can see the, uh, you can see the glow. But that's, you know, that's unintentional. <laughs> or is it? And here's where I, this is, this is definitely where I really lucked out. Um, I went ahead and reconnected the, uh, the maintenance portal. And I am right back, so... <laughs> Uh, I, I wish I could say what I did here. I'd, I know that this one is directly, not the Y axis, but the X and Z directly correlate with one of the nether. So maybe that's, maybe that's why it links up. But this is like way further down. Unless there's like a scaling thing when you go sideways, where like you multiply that by eight. I don't know, it's, like I said, it's complicated. So I hope you enjoyed all that. That was a bit of work. But it's it's all good fun, you know. I wouldn't be doing any of this stuff if I didn't actually enjoy it. So keep that in mind. I'm actually really excited to see these uh, projects all plan out and pan out. And I'll have another sort of um, thing. Um, I don't know. This is distracting. I'll have some more progress reports for you uh, when we get back. Uh, we'll we'll see where where we are from there. And there's always plenty of things to do around the town, like little little things here and there. And that's enough to keep me very busy and very happy. So, this has been Red McNed. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode.